Managing statistics is something you're probably used to doing in SQL Server, but how does that change when you move to Azure SQL Database? Tune in to learn from Aaron Stilato in this episode of Data Exposed MVP Edition. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed MVP Edition. Today, I'm joined by Aaron Salato from SQL Skills. Thanks for joining us today, Aaron. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Sure. I'm a principal consultant at SQL Skills. And in addition to providing services to our clients, we also provide training, not just through uh, SQL community events like PASS and BITS, but also through um, our own immersion events, which we are going to be doing online this year. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. And we'll definitely provide some links uh, for you guys to go check out more from SQL Skills in the future. Now, today we're going to talk about managing statistics. And this is something Aaron has been talking about in the community and with SQL Skills for a long time. Um, but today we're going to talk about how it relates to Azure SQL Database. So Aaron, can you kind of tell us a little bit of an overview of first maybe what statistics, why statistics are important and some of the challenges in Azure SQL Database? Absolutely. So stats are one of my favorite topics and they're critical to query performance. The optimizer uses statistics to determine how it's going to go get what you've asked for in your query. And when we talk about having uh, SQL Server installed on premises, people usually have agent jobs set up that are proactively managing statistics. And in Azure SQL, it's a little bit different. So we don't have the agent by default, and we have to be a little bit creative in how we can proactively manage stats and not just let our auto updates take care of things. Awesome. Thanks. Um, so why don't we dive right into it? Awesome. Thanks, Anna. So this is uh, Azure Data Studio where we're going to start. And I've done a little bit of prep work here in the interest of time. I've gone ahead and created a login uh, for my instance or my Azure SQL here. For, called, it's called DB Stats. Obviously, I have a different password. You'll specify yours. Then I've created a user within my user database. And today I'm using a copy of Wide World Importers. And I've also added that user as DB owner. And then my maintenance script that I'm going to use today is from Ola Hallingren. And I'm just going to kick this off here while um, we're kind of chatting. And I have a connection already here uh, for my Wide World Importers database. So this is going to run. And this is just code that I've used for a long time to manage statistics. And in this example, I'm just updating stats on one particular um, table. But in your production environment, you would probably manage this for your entire database. And we've gone ahead and updated statistics. And Ola's code includes the option, if we scroll down here, to see exactly what's been updated by querying the command log. So if we take a look, we can see that all of these statistics were just updated. And Ola script is a great way to do this, but you don't want to go in here and do this manually yourself on a regular basis. You want to have this automated. And that's where the automation comes in within Azure. So this is the code that we're going to use. And I'm just going to copy this right here. And then we'll hop over to the portal. And we're going to create an automation account. I've already got one here. As you can see, we're just going to step through uh, creating a new one to use just for um, our example today. So we're going to just call it stats mate, and we're going to specify one of my resource groups here. Actually, I'm going to switch my account, go over to my resource group, and then go ahead and create that. Now, once I have the automation account, uh, I'm going to come in here, and this is going to deploy and take a little bit. But once I've got that automation account deployed, then we'll go ahead and we will create our credential. And this, these can be named whatever you want to name them, right? It doesn't have to be anything fancy or specific. So we're just going to call it stats cred for this example. And then what's important here is this username that you want to use is the same user that we created within um, our instance, right, within our database. So we call that DB stats. And I have to specify the password here. So let me do that real quick. And once that's done, create that, we're good to go. So here at this point, before I go any further, I need to make sure that I have all the modules necessary for what I'm about to do. And 
in this case, I need a SQL Server module as well as two Azure modules. And I'm just going to show you how to find one of those and kick off the download for them. Downloading them takes a little bit of time, so we'll use the other automation account that I set up so that we can move this, continue to move through this demo. But once my modules are imported, then what I'm going to go ahead and do is create my runbook. And so my runbook is what is the code that I want to have automatically executed. So we would create a runbook called update stats. And in this case, we're going to have it uh, be a PowerShell workbook. And then I'm going to take that code that I had copied from my um, original from my script within management or not within management studio. I'm so used to that, but I'm switching slowly over to <laughs> Azure Data Studio, right? And I'm going to drop that in here. And you don't want to just save this. You actually need to publish it. And what we're specifying in here is we specify our server, we specify the name of our database, and then the name of the uh, credential that we created here, which in our example that we did just now, we called stats cred. And PowerShell then pulls um, the SQL Server username and the password to authenticate. And then if we scroll to the right, you'll see that that same code, hold on, the same code that we had run before in Azure Data Studio, we're going to run right here. And once you've got all of this set up, then you're going to go ahead and say publish. And you can test it in a couple different ways. One of the easiest things is to just go ahead and click start. Now, because I haven't downloaded, every module that I need. I'm going to flip over to the one that I set up in advance. So this hey, Aaron, is, yeah. Um, quick question, because I'm sure. kind of new to run books, actually. Um, what's the difference between a run book and the PowerShell or SQL notebook that you showed us? Like, what's one of the advantages for why you would use a run book? In this case, this is where we're going, actually. So it's a great question. The advantage here of this run book is that then I'm able to schedule it which is what I want to do, right? Because I don't want to have to go into Azure Data Studio to go through the runbook um, at a particular point in time. I want SQL Server, I want, I want Azure to handle this for me uh, gotcha. in, in the middle of the night, right? When nobody's in the system. So once I have my runbook in play, which is this stats maintenance, which we looked at before, um, and you can just come in here and view, and you can see that exact same code that we were looking at previously. Once this is in play, then what I'm going to do is add this or basically create um, a schedule for it. So I'm going to come back in here and then I'm going to say link to schedule. And I want to link a schedule to my runbook. I'll go ahead and create a new one. And this, let's just say that we were going to run this um, daily. So we would say daily stats and it's going to run at a particular time. Now I could run it now, but we'll just go ahead and say maybe that's going to be um, 1130 p.m. And I can run this one time, but this is something I want to do on a regular basis, right? I'm automating it. So I'm going to go ahead and say recurring. And this is going to recur every one day, every one week, whatever's appropriate, right? Based upon how often you need to manage statistics. And then if I don't want this to expire, I can say no. Otherwise, I can say yes and set that. Once I've gone ahead and set that schedule there, um, I can come back to, let me come back to my, and let me go over to my schedules. And if we see this, we see right here that it's not linked to my runbook. So this is one of those tricky things that you have to pay attention to when you create it in that manner. If I, I hop back to my runbook and I say link to schedule, then I'm going to link to a schedule that's already in my runbook, select the daily stats one that I just had and say, okay. Now, if I hop back to my schedule that I've set up to run nightly at 1130, you can see down here at the bottom that I have the stats maintenance selected. So if I wanted to just test this out really quick, I can go to my run book and open that up and just say start. And then this will just run through it right now. So when this finishes, right now it's queued, but when this finishes, then we can go back and query that command log table again to confirm that stats have been updated. So you can see that this has finished. And if I come back into Azure Data Studio 
And I'm going to come back here to the select from command log. You'll notice that when we ran this previously, we had six rows in our output. We can just check the last update time. If I run this again, we now have 12 rows in our, up, in our output. So it updated the same statistics again, right, just for demonstration purposes. But this is one way then that you can go back and you can validate that stats are getting updated on a regular basis. Well, thanks, Erin. This has been really useful. You know, I personally learned a lot. I've never seen run books before. I really like how easy they were to set up. And it seems like we're able to take this SQL Server knowledge and theory that, you know, Ola and yourself and the community have kind of developed over the years and, you know, still apply it in Azure SQL Database um, in just as powerful as a way. So that's really awesome. I really thank you, Erin, for joining us today. No problem. Thanks for having me, Anna. And so if you like this video, please like this video, leave us a comment, let us know what you're doing with Runbooks, and we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.